when, when they pulled me out of the wreckage. I was laying there, it felt like I felt alone. And that's what I felt like, I felt alone. That night, you know, the night before I had my discharge, I was like, I'm a, I'm a soldier, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm that, I'm that tanky. Yeah, that's my job, job, and when I woke up, I wasn't. Yeah, it, it felt lo I felt lonely, and I felt, yeah, that's it. What do I do now? I felt lost. My name is Peter Cosgrove, I'm 35, um, I volunteer for Models for Heroes, but I'm also a house husband. I served for eight years in the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment um, as a uh, driver and gunner on Challenger 2 tanks. In 2009, um, I was with a, um, with, with, with a squadron from my regiment and we were deployed on Herrick uh, as part of the Armoured Support Group using a vehicle called the Viking. Um, which was an amphibious snowmobile vehicle that was originally used by the Royal Marines and our role was as an armoured support unit for Task Force Helmand and um, at the end of my tour we were doing we were doing one of our, our last op on the ground and I was lead vehicle and um, I was involved in an IED strike on my vehicle um, which resulted in um, foot and leg injuries um, due to the blast. <laughs> Uh, when I was a child, um, starting from a very early age, um, my I, it was it was a kit that my dad had, and he never built it. It was a Airfix Cutty Sark, and one day we we just built it, me and my dad together, stuck together, no paint, you know, it was just loads of glue marks all over it, and um, we stuck it on the shelf, and then a couple of days later, my mum knocked it off the shelf and it shattered. That was you know, that was my introduction to it. By the time I was a teenager, stopped it. Beer, girls, clubs, usual. You know, you didn't want to say that your model mate because all the girls would go, you're boring. And um, then I joined the army and um, okay, eventually, yeah, so the incident happened. It was a joke present for the Christmas I came home from Sunny Oak. And uh, I, was, um, I was given a big box and in the box was a, uh, a Revell 137 second Tiger Moth and inside there was the, the kit but also a ticket to go flying in one which um, goes back to just before I went to Afghanistan I, I was, my mum was going to buy me a, uh, a trip in one and I said no I'll have it when I come back because I'm coming home. My granddad Charles Howard Brown yeah, he was uh, in the Fleet Air Arm in the Second World War, so he was in the Royal Navy. He was an armourer, so he ha he was one of the unsung heroes of um, keeping the aircraft in the air. The Sea Hurricane, um, was, which was his one of his favourites, he always used to tell me about it. And I, the photographs I've got of him always show him with a Sea Hurricane, and uh, a very particular operation, which the Sea Hurricane was heavy, it was Operation Pedestal, which was the uh, major convoy in the relief of Malta in August 1942. I have no qualms of building something that was designed to kill. There might be the odd vehicle that I might not want to because it might bring back a memory, um, but I'm, I'm not afraid of giving it a go. I've got a couple of Challenger 2 tanks in my, in my stash that someday I will build, I'll build them to how I remember it. I volunteer with Models for Heroes and I volunteer uh, not far from here in Ellsford and I have a small little group who um, who come on a, um, every month and we yeah we, we sit down we model mate we have a bit of banter as the best you know that's what that's what people in the armed forces are well known for we like having a little bit of a giggle um, and it's a it's a way of socialising you know and, and we can all we can all have a chat while bending a bit of plastic really.
Models Heroes um, gives a lot of benefits. It's a good way of socialising, meeting other people who are in the same boat, as you could say. You know, giving someone someone an idea to like be creative. They might sit down, concentrate on building something, or take their mind off their their problems. It's another tool in the toolbox, really, of coping. Over the last two years, I've been with them. I've been able to give something back by volunteering and running a session. Years ago, he was like, oh, he's got PTSD, right, we'll get rid of him, you're a nut nutcase or something like that. I think now people are accepting it. That this, you know, it's one of the tra traits of going to war, doing your job, seeing upsetting situations. It will stay with us forever. In, in today's society with not just the military, uh, emergency service, anything, you know, we have dealt with a tra traumatic situation. It, it's bringing it to light that it's not a stigma. It's not something bad. Um, it's what people live, you know, it's what people are living with, you know, it's a part of our lives now. So yeah, I think, I, I think times have changed and it's getting, the message is getting put across. Yeah, I think in today's society, um, they see the hobby, um, you know, they accepted it. Now, I'll use my wife, for example. She does knitting, sewing. It's exactly the same as that. You know, she goes to her clubs, I go to mine. Having a hobby, and from history, quoting Churchill, it's good to have two or three hobbies, you know, it makes you feel safe. come to realize that there's people out there there's the charities health for heroes british legion combat stress they've all helped me get to where i am now and the best part of it is family they've accepted me now you know this is this is peter um he's changed but he in other ways there's still a little bit of the old peter there No, I didn't think I had a future um, because of what it can, it can bring on. Um, yeah, it's it's a sorry. Sorry, guys. Models of Heroes. Um, they've helped me in many ways. Um, helped me to meet fellow modelers, um, you know, get out there as a volunteer and actually help um, fellow veterans who are in need of support. When I got flown back into Bryce Norton, I saw two Vikings on the flight pan and, uh, being loaded onto a Galaxy transport and that brought a tear to my eye. I don't want to just walk away from it, you know, it's part of my life really. And it, if that's there, that's there. I'll, I'll shed my tear, move and move on. You know, I've, all, I've, I've grown up around all these um, vehicles and history, and you know, it's something I do not, I, I don't want to just block away. I think it's something that you know, a doctor or a specialist could prescribe to someone. If they want something to keep those um, bad days at bay, or something to take their mind off it. I would say, give it a go yourself, and you know, don't don't knock until you've tried it.